What's going on guys? So welcome to another video. So as you can see, I've got a little bit of work done to the Z. Um, got the dash in, just four bolts holding it in, super easy, simple. Um, got the steering wheel in, wheel in and then got the pedals up in there. Uh, reason for this is I fit. I tried put, putting the cage in, um, but I need to know where the seat's gonna be at before I can really design my hoop area and see where that's gonna go. So I gotta have the seat in. Well, in order to get the seat sitting in there right, I need to trim the trans tunnel area because it is hitting there and it's not sitting on the ground because it's not, it's hitting there. So what I did is I marked, uh, there's a line there and a, a black sharpie line down there of basically where the seat needs to fit. So now I'm gonna go ahead and try modifying this transmission tunnel to get this seat fit in there. So I am definitely not sure what the best way to do this is. So we're just gonna try and I just needed to uh, get pushed over enough to where this seat will sit flat on the ground. Cause my head is pretty high to the, uh, the, the headliner. So the further down we can get the seat, the better. And the more adjustability we can get, the better. Because there, you can't go back much further because right here is where the, uh, the plate or the, the mount for the uh, roll cage is gonna go. So there'll be like a stand here. So that's pretty tight in there. So let's go ahead and pull the seat out and see if we can start modifying the trans tunnel. Okay, so I kind of devised a plan here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and let me adjust my camera here. I've got a mark here and here, and hopefully you can see that uh, hump there. But I'm gonna go ahead and try and cut it here at the top, cut a line across, and then cut a line down where my lines are, right there. And then I'm gonna try and bend this metal back to meet this. So I'm trying to bend it so that there's this hump isn't there. If it doesn't work well or it doesn't go, go as planned, then I'm just gonna go ahead and put a uh, new piece of metal in there. But yeah, let's go ahead and uh, mark it out. So I got that big piece cut out there. Um, problem I'm having is that this piece still needs to go back further because the seat needs to go back about here. So about this much still needs to be cut off, but it's like really reinforced here. There's a lot of metal. 
But uh, I got some other advice because I didn't really, I wasn't really sure what to do. But they went ahead and just said, just go ahead and cut it out. It'll be fine. And then uh, just shape shape everything to what you need it. And then so that's what I'm gonna do. And then if I wanted to, I can still just reinforce and put some metal up under there if I need to. But I don't think I'll have to do that. Just go ahead and cut it out. It's still gonna have the bolt hole for the seat. But I don't know what I'm gonna do for the seat over here. Oh, I guess I, I guess there is one there. So there's a bolt hole there for the harness. So I can use those two, so that's good. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this section out right here and we'll see where we're at. Okay, so this is going to be quite a bit bigger job than I had anticipated, but oh well, it's got to be done. Basically what I'm dealing with now is, we'll go ahead and get under the car. Is that, hopefully you can see this, the bracket for the seat, it's flat right here, so it's it sticks out this far. So that's about two inches that I need to come straight over um, and then basically go straight up to the top here. So that's quite a, quite a big uh, um, flat piece I need to create and then add an angle to. So what I did was I don't have any really metal working tools or anything like that but I devised a way that works pretty good so I took this heavy gauge steel here and I clamped well you saw me cut the the uh, thinner gauge steel that I'm gonna put in there I clamped the heavy stuff to the thin stuff I marked a line here so straight across and then uh, yeah I just took these clamps and I just started bent, pushing it down against this table to get a bend on there. I've got a little bit more bending to do, but you can see that, I mean, it's it's bent now. And I've got a flat, flat piece of metal here because of this plate. So that's how I did that. So we'll see how it, uh, how it fits in the car. Okay, so I've got a little bit of work done since you last saw it. I uh, actually had to cut or um, bend up a new piece because I cut it a little bit too short because um, I put a four inch gap here and then straight up so I the last one was too short had to cut a new one and but I've got this one tacked in um, fits pretty good uh, I already test fitted the seat and literally the seat is right on the edge of it so um, it's as good as it's gonna get now that's with the seat uh, on the bottom of this curve but um, depending on the, where the roll cage is and uh, how center the seat is with the steering wheel, I might need to build like an L bracket so that the seat brackets can come up here, not down on the floor. So we'll see about that. But then I got it curved up over in the corner and just cut a slit out. So it just like cut it along the front of it and then bent this front piece up and got it clamped here. So. What I'm going to do next is I'm actually going to go get the R154 
and put it in the car to see and just to make sure that all this is going to fit because I am taking up quite a bit of transmission space. But if the transmission fits, then that's that's good. And I don't really know why the Datsun had this hump in there to begin with. But we're going to make sure that it fits. So I'm going to do that and then we'll be able to uh, weld the whole thing up. Okay, so rather than lugging that big transmission over here, I just was a little bit smarter and just took some measurements of it. So uh, I'll add some pictures in here of the measurements, uh, basically where the shifter is gonna be coming through and where the shifter uh, or the transmission mount is gonna be. It, uh, the transmission is really narrow, so I don't have to worry about any fitment issues. Uh, at least I don't think so. So uh, I've got it clamped in now. Uh, I don't know if I so showed you guys, but uh, cut it out and I need to do the same to the back still. But I think I might go ahead and just like wall it off with a piece of metal here. Because if I cut it and notch it and then bend it over, I'm actually going to lose a little bit of bracket space for my seat. So I might just gonna go ahead and uh, like wall it off so I get this much more rather than it being coming in at a curve. So I've got this all clamped up, uh, good fitment up under here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and lay some tacks. It's nice that I can get these clamps in there, but uh, I'll just clamp it and tack it and work my way around. All welded in. Uh, got a nice, got a nice curve there. Kind of looks factory, not too janky, but uh, came out pretty nice. The clamps make it real easy. Um, next thing to do is to go ahead and conjoin this bottom piece of metal up up here. So um, really, with that, I'm probably just gonna go get like a, a scissor jack or. Uh, a jack really and just uh, jack it on up to the metal so uh, we'll see how that works hopefully we get some good fitment and then I'll uh, tack that in too All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and cut it along the, uh, the curve here. Uh, cut a straight line back, hopefully to about right here. And then I will just bend the flap over to meet this. And then same with the bottom, I should be able to bend it up. Um, it's gonna look better from the bottom side rather than having like a, a piece right here and just kind of look boxy from the bottom side. So if I Bend it over, it'll look a little bit smoother. Uh, so let's go ahead and get that done. All right, check her out. Got it all tacked in there. As you saw in my last clip, I kinda, I literally just used the scissor jack. It's laying over there now, but uh, I used the scissor jack on top of a paint can and uh, just kinda put the jack under the metal and push it up and wherever it uh, came in contact I tacked it and then moved the jack and tacked it and kept doing it and now it all comes together pretty good used a uh, hammer and kind of hit on the edges of it a little bit just so that uh, they would come together smoother so that is that so that front part is in looks pretty good I mean I do the best I can, so I think it looks good. Uh, next step is to go ahead and try and get the back done. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and cut it along the uh, the curve here. Uh, cut a straight line back, hopefully to about right here, and then I will just bend the flap over to meet this. And then same with the bottom, I should be able to 
open it up. Um, it's gonna look better from the bottom side rather than having like a, a piece right here and just kind of look boxy from the bottom side. So if I bend it over, it'll look a little bit smoother. Uh, so let's go ahead and get that done. All right, well there she is, pretty much all finished. Got this side done, it's pretty much a pain, but it's in there. It doesn't look as smooth smooth as the, the front, but the front has a lot more curve to it. I wanted the back to be pretty much a, a, a real tight angle, so that means I can get my seat further back. Uh, so that's, that's the reasoning behind that, and I'm not sure, maybe you guys are questioning why I'm even adding. This is about four inches here. Um, the reason I'm doing that is because since I'm having a roll cage and I am six foot two, which isn't too tall, but it's it's kind of tall for this car. Um, I need to be as low in the car and in the floor pan as I can. So the original seat brackets were, were too tall and um, the, the angle of this, I would have had to build the same height seat brackets to get the seat to fit and then the seat uh, the headrest would have been touching the ceiling. So I needed to get as low as possible and this is what is going to allow me to fit that seat in as low as possible. So let's go ahead and uh, get the seat in there. All right, well here's the NRG seat sitting in the car. You guys have seen it before on the passenger side at least. Got the sides taped up for whenever I was uh, moving it in and out. Didn't want to uh, rip it on some metal. But here it is, it's sitting in there. Got good amount of room here. So show you this side. You can see that bracket is just right on um, basically uh, the curvature of the trans tunnel now. Try and get some better light in there. There you go. You can see it now. That bracket there sitting right on that. I'm going to reinforce all of this. So I'm going to put a big piece of metal here and then reinforce it on both sides where the seat's going to bolt to the floor. So don't worry about that, but it's got room now. And then of course the seat is going to be tilted back uh, just a little bit. Um, I'll do, I'll, I'll be building that with uh, the seat bracket. So it'll have a tilt back to it. Um, so yeah, there's it. There it is fitting in the car. Um, yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, it was quite a bit of work to do, but uh, it was necessary. So the seat fits, that's good. Transmission is gonna fit. And yeah, so see you guys in the next one.